بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى الصحابة أجمعين ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما دي brothers and sisters السلام عليكم today إن شاء الله we are I believe on the fourth episode and it's a continuation of uh, moments in the life of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه as a Sahabi and we said last week إن شاء الله today we will continue with the migration of Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr came to the Rasul وسلم, and sought the permission of the Rasul وسلم, that he can migrate. Every Sahabi at the time who wanted to migrate, they go ask the Rasul وسلم, for permission and he grants them the permission and they go. So here Abu Bakr, he goes to the Rasul وسلم, to seek permission for himself to migrate. And the Prophet ﷺ says to him to remain patient, to wait, and perhaps Allah will grant him a companion. He said, be patient, perhaps Allah will give you a companion. So Abu Bakr thought about this. He's like, a companion? Who, who is going to migrate with me? And then he realized the Rasul ﷺ. So he left and he went and prepared two camels. He fed the camels. He uh, gave them water to drink and he put, uh, he put food and other things on, on the camels to prepare them for travel. And he waited until it's time to migrate. And one day there was a knock on the door and they opened the door and it was the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says to Abu Bakr that Allah has granted him permission to migrate. About himself. So the Rasul says, Allah has given me permission to migrate. And Abu Bakr he says, As Suhbah, Ya Rasulullah, As Suhbah, companionship, Ya Rasulullah. And he says, As Suhbah, As Suhbah, meaning, yes, you are my companion in this migration. And Aisha, anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr and the mother of the believers, she says, On that day, she witnessed. Abu Bakr, her father, cry like no other man has ever cried out of happiness and uh, sobbing. So when he's crying, he's crying and sobbing at the same time, out of happiness that he is to migrate with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now, subhanAllah, here, the, uh, here Abu Bakr is crying out of happiness that he's migrating with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa whilst the rest of Quraysh want to kill him. So he's crying out of happiness that he's putting himself in danger. All the other Sahaba, they migrated away from danger. But here the Rasul you think that Quraysh will allow him to just migrate quietly and to go unnoticed. In fact, they put a bounty on the Rasul They put a bounty of a hundred camels to whoever can capture the Rasul And here Abu Bakr is crying out of happiness and sobbing out of happiness that he has earned the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar radiallahu an, years later, he says how he wishes he was one hair, one hair on the chest of Abu Bakr. One single hair on the chest of Abu Bakr during that migration. And Abu Bakr says, uh, sorry, Umar radiallahu an, he says, he says a night, one single night of the night of the migration of Abu Bakr with Rasulullah sallallahu One night which Abu Bakr stayed during the migration with Rasulullah sallallahu is better than Umar and his entire family. And this is from Umar himself. He says, Wallahi, for one night is uh, during the uh, migration is better than Umar and his entire family. So the Sahaba, they knew, the rest of the Sahaba, they knew the position of Abu Bakr. They knew the love of Abu Bakr to Rasulullah and the love of Rasulullah towards Abu Bakr. So here Abu Bakr, now that he's been given the glad tidings of migrate, migrating with Rasulullah, he goes into his house and he takes all his wealth, leaves nothing for his family. Doesn't leave a single penny for his family. He takes everything. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, this will help us during the migration. If they need to buy anything, if they need to pay someone to show them, uh, to uh, escort them, to show them, uh, to be a guide for them. 
and they went. And when they arrived at Ghar, uh, at the at the cave, um, Abu Bakr says to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Wait here and let me go in and check first. He wants to check that it's safe to enter. There's no scorpions, there's no snakes, there's nothing that can harm the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." So Abu Bakr goes in, and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us he says that he's seen Abu Bakr tidying up, cleaning up, and wherever there was a hole, so the hole is. Um, Perhaps a way for uh, an animal, a creature to come in and harm the Rasul Wherever he seen a hole, he'd pick up some pebbles, some stones, some twigs And fill in those holes And when that wasn't enough, then he'll rip parts of his garments, garments off And he will block the holes So the entire cave, he went through it bit, one spot at a time And he filled up these holes with his garments and uh, pebbles or Dirt that he picked up off the ground. So, when he completed this, then he goes out and he says to the Rasul, he may enter. And they go in. And the cave is very tight, it's very small. So, Abu Bakr says to the Rasul, come put your head on my lap. Bring your head and let, let it rest on my lap. And the Rasul rested his head on the lap of. Abu Bakr and how lucky was Abu Bakr to experience this and have the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam place his head upon himself, upon Abu Bakr. Wallahi, this, is, this in itself is a blessing and it's an honor that many of us, when we read it or we hear about it, we tend to forget. We just think it's something, it's something small. Just today, just like today, if you see your young son or yourself go to your mother and you put your head on your mother. Doesn't that bring you yourself comfort and security? And flip this for your parents when they feel their child come and lay their laps on them. Doesn't this make them feel loved, make them feel wanted, appreciated? So can you imagine Abu Bakr at that time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam places his head on the lap of Abu Bakr and how lucky and how befitting is this? So while the Rasul sallallahu was asleep on the lap of Abu Bakr a while passes and Abu Bakr turns to the right and looks up and he spots a hole which he missed. And th through that hole, there was a snake popping its head out, out and back in again, and then out and back in again. And here Abu Bakr is in a dilemma. If he moves in order to block, to try and, and block the, the hole, he'll disturb the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if he remains still, then the snake may come out and harm the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And both of these, Abu Bakr wasn't willing to consider any of these options. So he stretched forth and he put his finger and blocked the hole. So the, the snake bit the finger of Abu Bakr. And the pain begins to settle. Begins to hit Abu Bakr. And the pain is so severe, he's, he remains still so that he doesn't disturb the Rasul Sallallahu But due to the severity of the, of the pain he's enduring, he begins to tear up and tears come down his face. And the tears fall down and wake the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Rasul Sallallahu wakes up, looks at Abu Bakr, and he asks, what, what's wrong? So he says to him, it's nothing. It was just a hole, I blocked it, and a snake bit me. So the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi he blew on the, the fingers of Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr said, I saw the poison pouring out as you see water pouring out when you blow on water. So when you blow water out, your, out of your mouth, he seen the, the poison pouring out of his hands the way that you blow water out of your mouth. And this is a blessing, uh, it's um, uh, one of the miracles and a blessing 
which Abu Bakr got to witness and experience. After this, they both were very, very thirsty, severely thirsty. thirsty. So Abu Bakr goes out to look for something for them to drink. And he came across a shepherd with his flock. And he says to him, do you have anything, to any water for us that you may give us? And he said, all I have is this small amount of uh, milk. So he says, may I have it? And he gives it to him. So immediately he rushes back to Rasulullah <clears throat> And the milk was not enough for both of them. It was only enough for one. And they are thirsty to the point, yani, their throats are dry, they can't, they, they, they just need a drink. So here he doesn't take not even a sip. He rushes back to Rasulullah and gives it to Rasulullah. And the Rasul began to drink. And Abu Bakr, look at these beautiful words, subhanAllah. He says, he, the Rasul drank until I quenched my thirst. He drank until I quenched my thirst. SubhanAllah. Look at the love he ha they had for one another. How beautiful words. That seeing the Rasul quenched his own thirst. SubhanAllah. And this whole time, Abu Bakr is worried. The whole migration, Abu Bakr is worried and he's scared. Not for himself, for we know Abu Bakr was brave. He was worried that something will happen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here Allah sends down the, the ayat. Allah reveals when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr, Do not fear, inna Allah ma'ana. Allah is with us. And Allah sends down his sakina to Abu Bakr. Allah himself sends down his sakina to Abu Bakr. And we said Abu Bakr was brave. And he was never scared about himself. And to evidence this, to evidence this, we know the story, the story of the migration. Abu Bakr would be in front of the Rasul worried that somebody may um, throw arrows at him. And after a while, he'd go behind the Rasul worried that somebody may come from his back. And every now and again, he'd move to his left, to, uh, to his left, to his right, front and back. Constantly moving to protect Rasulullah Pulling himself in harm's way to protect Rasulullah And the Rasul turns to Abu Bakr and he says Ya Abu Bakr, do you love me? And he says, of course He began to cry, he began to tear up And he says, of course Ya Rasulullah He said, would you die for me? He says, but of course Ya Rasulullah He said, would you rather, would you rather die than me? And if the option came, would you decide to die and let me live? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I am but one man. But if you die, Islam dies. Look at this, subhanAllah. He cared about the ummah and about the message reaching this ummah and reaching the entire world. He didn't care about himself. He cared about Rasulullah and the Risala. And here, subhanAllah, when Rasulullah is saying to him, do you love me? He's not asking him, it's actually a form of comfort. And for those parents, you will feel this when you're sitting with your, with your children and your children's cuddled up to you and you, he feels the comfort and he snuggles up to you a, li a little bit more and you feel him and you sense him, you look down and they're smiling. Don't you turn to them and say, do you love me? And this is comfort to say, I know you love me. And here Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying to Abu Bakr, I know you love me. He's affirming it. Do you love me? Meaning, yes, I know you love me. Would you die for me? Meaning, I know you would die for me. And this is the love of Abu Bakr to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved Abu Bakr. And Subhanallah, this, this series is only five episodes. And inshallah, next week we will conclude and um, how fast the time has gone. And subhanAllah, it was just like yesterday I was asked to, to do this mini-series about Abu Bakr. And subhanAllah, I thought five episodes, we can get as much in. But wallahi, we haven't even touched the surface. But thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for coming back week after week. And inshallah, I will see you again next week for the final uh, episode of Abu Bakr and the conclusion. Wa jazakumullahu khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.